All right, everyone. Thanks so much again for joining us. I'm Missy. I'm the director. I'm not the director. I'm the manager of events and programs here at JMT Consulting. And I have Cherry Carlos, the director of business development from Microy, joining us, as well as Dan Wharton. He's a senior client sales manager with us. I want to go through a few housekeeping tips before we get started, and then I will turn it over to Dan and Cherry. Uh, first, we are recording this webinar. You will receive a copy of the recording as well as a copy of the slides following the webinar. If you have any questions at all during the webinar, please make sure that you submit those to the Q&A portion of your screen, and we will answer those at the end. And with that, I will turn it over to Dan. Cool. Thanks, Melissa. You should be a director, so just throwing that out there. All right, folks. Today's presentation should take about 45 minutes to deliver. Uh, we'll have maybe 10 to 15 minutes to answer questions from the audience. Um, hey, Melissa, uh, would you mind hitting next on the, on the presentation? And this is this is the agenda that we're working off of. So you'll see introductions. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about JMT. Some of the folks that are on this line are already familiar with us. Uh, some are not. Um, we'll get through uh, an introduction, and then of course uh, the real meat and potatoes is the workflow software itself. Let's take a look at Microis requisitions and PO module. Um, we'll also have again time for questions and answers. So uh, if you have, uh, if you're like me, uh, you don't want to write anything down um, and you just want to ask a question while it's still in your head, please use that chat feature at the bottom. Um, we'll get to all questions at the end. And if there's anything we can't do, get to, then by all means, uh, we'll follow up with you after the fact. So I think it's important to start off by telling you a little bit about who we are and who we serve, how we only serve the nonprofit community and how we've grown to become the largest MIP partner in the country. Um, hold on, Missy, keep, uh, go back. <laughs> All right, perfect. We can stay there for a second. Most of our time will be spent looking at the, the requisitions and PO module. We absolutely love this AP automation solution, and it really is the only solution out there that fully integrates with MIP. And again, at the end of the presentation, we'll open things up and take questions from the audience. All right, go ahead and hit next. I want to start off by thanking everyone for taking the time to meet with us today. My name is Dan Wharton, and I'm a customer account manager. Uh, I work with hundreds of nonprofits across the country and assist them with their day-to-day. -day. You may have a new employee that needs to be trained. You may want to import data from another system to eliminate manual entry. Maybe you want to know uh, about MIP Cloud and its benefits. Customers are always looking for free resources, tips, tricks, and how they can better leverage MIP. I can be that person you call to ask for help. I can make your life easier and more productive. Now, let's talk a little bit about M uh, JMT and the people that make this a great place. All right, Missy, stay here for a second. Uh, GMT Consulting is the largest reseller, not just in volume, but also in size. We have regional offices in Austin, Texas, Nashville, Tennessee, and Patterson, New York, and really staff everywhere in between. Uh, we invited Mike Ray to talk about their AP automation solution, but the truth is MIP customers have several options. Over the years, we've observed and learned uh, so there's no, that there's no real such thing as a one-size-fits-all solution. GMT has vetted hundreds of vendors to bring you the best-in-class solutions for payroll, for financial planning and analysis, for cemetery management, for AP automation, for document management, and more. Rest assured, everything that we do will lead to better processes and greater efficiency. All right, Missy, hit the next one. So a little bit of history. How did we get our start? Well, uh, Jackie yourself is uh, in the upper right-hand corner, and you can see our first office, the office, the one in Patterson, New York. It's still there. Then I'm remodeled. Um, but still still uh, a great place to visit and a great place to work out of. Um, JMC celebrated its 30th birthday in January. Before that, Jackie had served in multiple financial and operations roles for several different nonprofits and was charged with implementing new ERP solutions while working for each of them. Each implementation came with its own unique set of challenges and experience uh, experiences, but at the end of the day, 
She had to keep asking herself why. Why can't nonprofits have a good experience? Uh, why aren't they uh, having that um, white glove treatment? Why are nonprofits uh, getting, why aren't they getting access to the same best in class solutions as the for profit world? What can she do to lead a change? And you can say, Jackie had an epiphany and vowed to make a difference with a lifelong passion for nonprofits and with having a, a customer, uh, having been a customer who was less than pleased with the technology services she received, it was in that spirit which she found JMT Consulting. All right, next slide. Previous slide said we had 2,000 customers. Here's a handful. Um, this is some of the many profits that we served over the years and continue to serve. Uh, some of these orgs are small foundations. Some have a national presence, multiple offices. Some have in, in, uh, international products and presences. Um, JMT is small enough to deliver a personalized experience, but big enough and experienced enough to handle any large scale project. How do we do it? Well, we really do have a great team of professionals. And let's, uh, let's hit the next slide and see a few of them. Like I said, some of the attendees on today's call are customers. And we work with you day in and day out. Uh, some of you are new. Um, for those who are, are new to JMT, uh, I want to introduce, uh, or at least put, uh, put some names, uh, faces to the names. Um, guy in the, the guy in the tie is Dennis. He's a magician when it comes to data and making things work. Carol is our chief experience officer. She's been with us for years, served many roles, uh, recently became our uh, experience leader so is, has such a great way with customers. Um, Dougie uh, in the pink collar absolutely loves training users and working on implementations and training engagements and just helping customers make better use of MIP. Um, Lucy, as well as some others, uh, started out as a customer and then joined JMT. We tend to, I guess, poach from customers, not that we uh, intend on doing that, it's just so happens that um, we really do bring a great experience to customers, and uh, a lot of uh, a lot of these nonprofit leaders want to be a part of that. Anyway, uh, again, it's nice to be able to put a face to the name. They all do great work and have a common goal: create a great customer experience. All right, Missy, let's uh, take a look at the next slide. Hopefully this is big enough. Um, if not, maybe use the magnifier. I didn't really give uh, much thought to that when I put this, but I, I pulled in these reviews uh, last night. Um, the reviews on the left are coming directly from g2.com. So if you want to jump out to that website uh, and see firsthand for yourself what people are saying about JMT, please do so. And the uh, customer on the right is directly from the Microy, M-I-C-R-O-I-X dot net website. Anyway, go there, check out what other nonprofits are saying about us, and then give us a call. Um, first thing we would do uh, when you gave us a call is spend time listening and observing. What are the problems you're trying to solve? What prompted the request in the first place? What requirements do you have? How does your team operate? What processes do you already have in place and how can we build off them? The really cool thing about workflow software, uh, micro solutions, is that the solution will adopt to your, 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 adopt your current processes and really mold around you. It'll take all the good stuff and fill in any gaps you might have. A lot of cases you might find that you might have to, uh, or at least with a lot of other software programs out there, you might actually have to change the way you do things or even re really kind of change who you are in order to make the software work. That is not the case with micro. All right, one, uh, one more slide before I transition over to Cherry. Uh, I, I, I realized that I used a, a phrase a couple minutes ago that maybe not everyone is familiar with. It's best in class. But what is that? What does it mean? Gartner uh, defines best in class as the superior product within a category of hardware or software. It does not necessarily mean best product overall, however. Uh, for example, the best-in-class product in a low-price category may be inferior to the best product on the market, which could sell for much more. 
JT absolutely recommends Microarray's requisitions and PO module as a best-in-class solution and we want to welcome you to the world of AP automation. Now, at this point, I'm going to turn things over to Cherry. Cherry is going to walk us through the rest of the presentation. Again, remember to jot down questions in the chat room, and we'll have an opportunity to address them at the end of the presentation. All right, Missy, help me transition over to Cherry, and I'll... Uh, Ready to go for us. Well, great. Thank you, Dan, and thank you, Melissa. This is Sherry with MyCoy. Um, we are scheduled to take a look at the requisition module today. Uh, I like to call it the requisition purchase order invoicing. Uh, we're going to take a look at that today. Uh, just a quick overview of this module. Um, it allows you to decentralize your requisition uh, process or AP processing and having staff uh, logging into this application or through a web browser to generate their requests, kind of just moving away from that paper, having staff logging in, uh, generate a request. Um, administrators will be able to enforce a specific rule requirements or uh, you know, to help reduce errors, ensure that information is accurately provided to properly process a request. Once that request is submitted and, you know, through our multi-level approval process, which I'll, you know, demonstrate for you today, it automatically gets converted. If your process is to produce purchase orders, it could, uh, you know, uh, take that purchase order and seamlessly transfer it to MIP, your accounting system, as an unposted. If you're currently using the encumbrance module, we could send it over as encumbrance or we could send that over as an AP transaction. So if you're just needing the system just to process AP, um, again, this software is highly customizable. So if your need is just to put through request, uh, maybe a check request, maybe expense reimbursement, maybe your process is that you do need to produce purchase orders. This system can handle all of the above. Okay, now the first thing we want to really talk about and the main uh, focus on today's presentation is being able to go paperless, right? So I want to first uh, show some slides here. Uh, let me go ahead and present that. Show you some different ways that you can utilize the system, basically some user interfaces. So for most people who might be working remote, um, I want to show you um, how you would be able to access this system, okay? Uh, so there's three basic user interfaces uh, that comes with this solution. The first one, which is included with the software, is a portion for full desktop um, user interface for requesters and approvers. Um, it is based on concurrent licenses. And we would require to have accounting finance to have this type of license because they would have to transfer the documents over to, to MIP. So that would be uh, the first type of user interface. The second type of user interface, again, for those who are working remote, is called the Micro Cloud Companion Web Application. It is a lighter version, but you could see on this screen here, this would be an approver who would be coming in here, logging in with their name and password through a web browser to be able to approve their request. And this is a little bit more cost efficient. So uh, we have some web packs that um, Dan will be able to you know, uh, price out for you if you're interested in this model. But again, those who are working remote will be able to log into this this version and be able to generate the request. And it's also used for approvers, okay? So we'll demonstrate that for you. The third option, um, it's called the HTML approver, uh, approver. And if you notice here, this will allow certain level approvers, again, working remote, will, uh, and you're an approver, you will be able to get your request via an email and approve it within an email. So if this request came to you with an attachment or, um, you know, budget is a concern, notice here you'll be able to see uh, the budget. Uh, and this budget is, is basically the budget that you have posted in MIP. So it will show you what you have available if that is a concern. But just showing you, again, a, a third user interface for approvers 
to be able to approve, reject, avoid their request simply from um, within an email. Okay, so I just wanted to start off with that um, before we jump back into the software to show you, um, you know, those really uh, convenient ways to generate a request and approve a request. Let's jump back into the application now. Um, make sure you're seeing my screen here. So again, the, the main focus of today, again, is to go automated with my query. The one uh, benefit that Dan described, this solution it was designed specifically for MIP. So you're getting that seamless integration. We do not integrate with any other solution. We're specifically designed for MRP. What that means for you is once you load this software, it actually goes out to your uh, your accounting, your MIP accounting system, and it's reading tables from MIP. So for example, all the vendors that you currently have in your MIP system, and I'll demonstrate that for you really quickly here. Um, I'm going to go Harry, into a request. It's Melissa, yes. can you hear me? Yes, we I can. not see your screen. Uh, we can't oh, see the me, screen anymore. Sorry to interrupt. Oh, let me try one more time. Sorry about that. There you everyone. go. Oh, yeah. There it is. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Thank yeah, you. Uh, let's, um, what I wanted to describe to you is um, that seamless integration. I want to show you when um, the vendors that you currently have in MIP, how it shows up in this solution. So notice my vendor list here. This is just showing you how MyCore is actually going out and it's reading the current vendors that you have in your accounting system. Now you have the ability when we get over to the workflow, I could show you how you could limit this, this list. But again, if accounting has just added as a, a vendor in your accounting system, you can come back to this list and you're going to see it in real time. Okay. The other thing that we're reading is your segments. Notice here, this is my sample database. Your fund, you know, I have a fund grant GL program. This would be reflective of your segments. We're also reading all, you know, the fund codes from your accounting system. The other important piece might be budget. Let's say when your employee puts through a request, budget might be a concern. So we have real-time budget controls um, that allow users and approvers, and I'll demonstrate that for you real quickly here, where... Um, you could um, set it up where uh, you an employee cannot exceed their budget. We have some some uh, um, process in place where you can block users from even being uh, able to submit a document that um, has no funds available. But again, if we take a closer look, here's an employee who put through a request. They, you know, it's a for a phone bill. It's sixty two forty four. And I want it based on how I have it coded here, I clicked on the budget check and goes out to MIP and it's telling me exactly what I have budgeted in MIP, which is zero. It shows my actuals here, again, real time. If you're using encumbrance, it will show encumbrance here, your balance. The unposted is what accounting in MyCore has sent over to MIP and have not posted yet. What's going through MyCore and what you have available? So again, a very important piece if budget is a concern and you need to check budget that will be included with this solution. Okay. Now to start off the you know the demonstration here, I like to usually talk about the workflows, and the workflows is the ability for you to um, you know uh, define um, a, wor a workflow in micro could represent maybe one of your departments. We mainly seen it uh, set up by department, but most certainly you could set up a workflow based on a location, a manager, okay? So in my example here, I have a, a workflow called program services. So in your workflows, again, you have the ability to build in as many rules as, as needed. Depending on what your current process is, we will take that and replicate that here in the system. So that once an employee logs in to generate their request, this system will enforce those rules for you. And again, it, it can be configured in a very simple manner, or if you need complex uh, you know, uh, processes built into the software, um, you will be able to, to do that. Let, let me show you some of the options you have. So in my workflow here, I could tell the software which employees would belong to this workflow. 
and uh, more importantly, you know, how I want their documents routed, routed for approval. Do I need to just set up a very simple approval process? Maybe we just need it to go through three levels. Maybe just from the request, it needs to go to a supervisor, then straight to accounting finance. Or do you need more levels? So who's all going to be involved in your approval process? You will be able to come in here and customize it. Some other things you can build into your workflows. Um, notice here I have dollar value routing. I have a $500 inserted here. So what this means is if this document gets up to the manager, it's going to say anything that's under 500, I need it to go to the purchasing level. I have a purchasing level or whichever level you determine. Anything over, we need to get an additional approval on that. So you have the ability to build in dollar value routings into your workflows. Now, this software comes with email notification. That's how a uh, approver is going to know that there's a document waiting for them to approve it. You're going to get that email. And I just I showed you at the beginning the options that you will have um, in, in logging into the application or through the web or maybe with the HTML approval, um, being able to quickly approve those documents. Okay. Um, some other things we have in place, again, with going automated, system here, you do not want these documents held up at a level. Let's say this manager's on vacation, leave or vacation. You know, what do we have in place? Uh, you don't want that document again held up at that level. So MyCord has two options. You could come in here and you could tell the system that manager can come in here and say, I'm leaving on such and such a date. I need um, this approver to approve my documents while I'm away. So initiate a temporary substitution, okay? Or the other option related to substitution, notice here I have an alternate approver. So what that means is I can build in a permanent person at my level that can go in and approve my documents for me while I'm away. So again, just some things you have in place um, when you, you know, go to this automation system that these documents are gonna be flowing in a timely manner. Now, again, we have options with um, account restrictions. You know, do you want to help staff on how their documents are going to be coded? Or perhaps you don't want them to touch the coding at all. You want that done at a higher level. Okay. So again, in the workflow, you have ways that you can limit staff um, on what codes they could choose from. It's not to say if they coded incorrectly, all of that coding can be modified. And I'll demonstrate that for you. Accounting will have the final say. If you're currently using distribution codes in MIP that you may want to use in MyCore, we're also reading those distribution codes. So again, just a quick look at um, you know, workflows, how you'd be able to automate that, how you'd be able to build in all those business rules and um, you know, set up uh, those segment values um, that you currently have in MIP. You'll be able to set that, you know, set that up here in the system. OK, so now the next part of the demonstration is basically showing you, you know, how easy it will be for staff to come in here and generate a request, how easy that form would look like for them, whether they're going to come into the desktop or through the web version that we mentioned. They will be able to log in with their own name and password. When they log in, um, they'll be able to see a list of all their documents. So there's no need for this employee to, to call anybody to find out where it is in the approval process, this employee have access to see their documents and know exactly where it is in the approval process. You notice some are sitting at my accounting, uh, at, I'm sorry, at my requester level. I'm still continuing to work on it. I can see documents that was, you know, went on to the accounting department. I could see that. I could even see documents that was transferred over to, you know, to MIP. Notice I can see that. I don't have access to MIP, but I can see that my document was sent over. Now, the other nice thing is, what if a vendor calls you directly and they're looking for payment information? Now, again, another example of how MyCoy reads the information from MIP. So, for example, if a vendor calls me, I could search for my document. This top field is a quick way for me to search for it, whether I know it's by the vendor ID or you know, the document number, I could search for it. But the idea here is I can click on my document. I know that it was transferred to, to MIP. And when I click on it, notice it allows me to see payment information. 
So if accounting has just cut a check over an MIP, if I click on this payment button, it's actually going to go out to MIP and it's going to read that payment inf information. It will show me, let me see if I have one that I can show you that payment. Um, looks like I had not cut any checks in there recently. Let's check here. The idea here though, uh, let me check one more. You will be able to see the payment information, the pay date and the uh, amount. Of course, you won't see a copy of the check, but you know, a great way for you to reduce some of the calls that might be coming into accounting by you providing that information, okay? So let's now take a quick look at the actual form itself, okay? I just wanted you to take a quick look at it, um, what information the staff, you know, employees will be filling out on this form. You have control as far as how much information you want them to fill out on this form. I went ahead and filled one out. Um, the system can auto generate the number for you, um, or you could prompt it if you wanted to enter your own invoice number or own a document number, you could set it up in that way. But in my example here, I have it auto generating the number. I could put in a, a brief description here. The software already knows what workflow I belong to. Here is my vendor information. There's some things in place here. What if this is a brand new vendor? How do you want the staff to handle it? So we could have a dis more detailed discussion on that. There's a couple options available, um, but if the vendor's there, I can go ahead and select a vendor. Here's reason justification I could fill out, any special instruction. Now this software comes with attachments. So um, I could scan in um, a, a document and I could have it um, attached to this form. Um, this, many different ways that I can get attachments onto this form. I have another uh, slide I'll, I'll jump back to to show you how we can get attachments in. The way I'm doing it here is I'm going to go out to my desktop, um, retrieve whether it's a PDF, a Word, Excel, and attach it mm -hmm. to this form. Okay. Uh, we also have an option with a webcam where I could take a picture of, of a receipt. We have an auto attach option, batch scanning option. So a few different ways you can get attachments onto this form. Once I have it attached, you know, um, that's the top of the form. Um, that's going to be later viewed when the invoice comes in or any other attachment needs to be done. All of that will be attached to this document for all approvers to see. Now, the way I can get quickly get transactions onto this form, I could simply just, you know, come in here. I entered one. I, you know, it was the phone bill. I have the amount in here. And I showed you where you can go in here and code. Now, I show, also showed you in the workflow where you could help staff or Perhaps you don't want them to touch the coding at all. Maybe that's all you want them to do and submit it for approval. Or maybe just highlight the areas that are easy, you know, uh, that you need them to fill out. So you make this form really user friendly for the staff. So lots of options you have here. You could make it required for them to have an attachment. That's another option you have. Um, so lots of other. Um, you know, um, you have control, again, as far as what information you want them to fill out. Once they fill it out, they would just simply submit it for approval. That was a budget warning, by the way. And then it, it moves it on to the first level approver. And that will bring me to the approval process. What, what functions would approver have when, when they get this document? So for all approvers, they're going to log in to the desktop version here. Um, that again, one option. They could log into the web companion to be able to approve this document. Or I also showed you the HTML approval. You know, so they can log in, open up the document. So what I'm going to show you here would be the functions for all approvers whether you're a supervisor, manager, even for accounting. You're going to get the document. You're going to be reviewing what was sent to you. Again, as an approval, you can check the budget. We went through that earlier, okay? You have the ability as an approver to modify anything on this document. You could change the vendor, you could change, you could add things on. You could maybe complete the, the coding or go ahead and code it out, okay? By the way, I, 
failed to mention earlier that there is a copy feature as well, where you can go out to a previous requisition and copy the way, you know, just for quick data entry. So keep that in mind that there, there is an option to copy from a previous um, document onto your new form for quick entry, okay? But as far as the approver is concerned, they're just, you know, maybe viewing the attachments that came along. Um, any changes that's done to this document, just know that there is an audit trail that will capture all the changes down to the detail. So you could always come back to this document and see who changed what on this document. Okay, so as an approver, I can modify anything. I can check the budget. I can void the document. An email will be sent back to the employee to let them know it was void. Another option I have is I could send a quick email, ask a question, keep the document in my queue, ask the question, wait for the response before I can approve it. Or perhaps I need to route it back. So maybe, you know, the invoice came in, it was a little higher. Maybe the employee called, can you send this document back to me? Many different reasons why. Uh, so you have the ability to take it out of your queue and move it back to a previous level. Okay, so that's another option all approvers will have is to reroute. If I wanted to print a copy of the document, I have the option to print it out. Okay. Um, with these forms, just know, here's an example of the form, you can drop in your company logo onto this form. Um, in my example, this requisition, when it gets up to a certain level, it's going to cha change right over to a purchase order, or this could be an AP document. Here's your vendor information, um, document detail, here's all your approvals, and it will have a watermark here. Once it's been approved, it will have a green watermark there, okay? I just wanted to sh quickly show you what that would look like. Some other options, um, we talked about the audit trail. I think we went through most of them, but as soon as it's, you know, if I'm ready to approve it, I will just click approve and it takes it on to the next person in line to approve it. Okay. So let's, let's follow this document and I want to show you how this would seamlessly transfer over into your accounting system. Okay. So let me go ahead and demonstrate that for you. So the last level approver, I may have to approve it one more time. Let me go ahead and do that. Approve. So now that it's at the accounting finance level here, accounting will open the document. You know, there, there's their queue uh, waiting for them to take action on. And the software does not allow you to, to, to select multiple documents and approve it at once. It does force each approver to open each document. Um, so once I open it, again, this is the final level. Um, you have all the functions I mentioned earlier, rerouting it back, checking budget, making final changes. But once accounting is ready to go ahead and send this over to MIP uh, to get this paid, uh, when they click a, approve, Notice what pops up here. It's an AP invoice transfer dialog box. Depending on your process, um, in my case, I'm sending it over as an AP. There's some other functions or other transfer dialog box depending on your process. But the, 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 um, this is the main one that would send this document over to MIP as an AP. I do have the ability to reference the unique vendor invoice number here. If this vendor invoice number is already posted in MIP, it will tell you it's, an, it's a duplicate. It will not allow you to send it over. If you have any possible duplicates, it will show up here for you, for you to do uh, maybe some further research on it. It will not stop you, um, but you can do some research on it. You're going to create a session, and I'm going to click Process. And now this document, as soon as I click Process, accounting is going to log out of micro go log into MIP and you're going to open that unposted session to review that transaction. Um, again, I, you know, while they're in my query, however, they're going to continue to work on each document and send each document over into, you know, in this very same step I just showed you here. So at the, by the end of the day in MIP, there could be 50 documents sitting in this session. And you could have multiple sessions going on at once. So at the end of the day, again, accounting would log out of my court, going to MIP, open up this session. If you sent over 50 documents, for example, they're going to review all 50. 
um, if uh, error, if you need to make some changes to any particular document, you do have the ability to pull that out of this session, bring it back into my query, make the change, and then we transfer it back over because you have not posted it yet. Once everything looks great, all accounting will have to do in MIP is post, post it, uh, maybe do a cash requirement and just print the checks in MIP. So no data entering will have to be done in MIP. Okay. I'm going to check on my time real quickly. Uh, I, I do have some time to go through maybe two functions, maybe credit card and, and vendor punch out. Dan, um, Melissa, do we have time to go you through that? Done. You do. Yeah, I think we're good. Okay, okay. So anyone who's, um, this software also includes uh, credit card statement processing. So the way that we've seen this, um, if you just want the ability to just uh, pay credit card, we can actually import either a CSV or OFX file of the statement from your credit card company, and then um, it can be processed as an AP document in my court. There is an option for you to distribute the AP document to credit card holders, if that's one of your process, so that they can provide the supporting documentation then submit it uh, for processing. So that's one way, um, well, the initial way that it was intended to be used. Let me see if I have a sample of a credit card in here. Don't think I have one on here. But the idea is that, um, oh, I thought I had one in here. Once you pull up that credit, once it's downloaded, you will be able to see all the transactions. Um, all the transaction would be loaded here for you, ready for the uh, manager to go ahead and code out each transaction and attach any of their backup. And then you could set up a separate approval process to handle credit card statement processing. So um, that's an option um, if you have a need for credit card. There is another option for approving credit card purchases uh, via MyQuery. It would require some additional setup on the MIP side to reconcile with the credit card statement, um, but just know that that's included here if you have a need for credit card statement processing. Another um, add-on here is uh, another add-on to the, the software here. This would be an additional cost, vendor punch out. This has been really popular. If you have a need um, to shop at vendor websites, Micro makes it really easy for you to submit your order. You can use our vendor punch out um, you know, while creating the PO inside of MyCoy um, to submit for approval. So again, you would just launch out, for example, Amazon, Office Max, uh, we have some medical supplies companies. So again, just being able to interact with that a vendor, the vendor must have punch out capabilities um, in order to, to um, you know, interact with this vendor punch out. But again, staff can launch out, you know, to the vendor website, um, shop, Put their items in. Um, they could, you know, it'll bring you back into MyCore, create the, the requisition, send it to an approval process, and then you can upload it back via punch out. Okay, so that's an option um, that would be an additional cost that comes with with the solution. Um, another, you know, lot, tons of reports that's available related to to, to uh, requisition um, uh, that's also available in this solution. Okay, uh, let's see what we can chat about um, next. Um, or maybe we can open it up for some questions. Wonderful. We do have some questions that I can read out to you. Okay. So the first one, as it relates to document management systems, I'm interested to know whether Microy would integrate with the document management system that may already be in use for document storage. Sorry, I can feel this one. Or... Okay, thank you, Dan. Thank you, Dan. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, so, Paulette, I, I think that depends. More often than not, you have a document management system because it's uh, serving multiple purposes, not just finance or AP or something along those lines. Uh, I have a couple of customers that have a true enterprise class document management system. They keep the documentation in that system. Reason being is because it's already following workflows. It already has um, 
rules and naming conventions and version control and all those things that go along with electronic document. So um, there would be a way to at least link the document that you have in uh, microwave, but it, the document itself would more than likely be housed in that other solution. So in a way there's integration. Um, what we would end up doing is, is again, using a link, which is really just a, uh, an HTML link. So that if anyone clicks on that, they would be routed over to the document itself, assuming they had the proper permission. So that's, that hopefully answers the question. Excellent. Next question. Is the email notification capability available with the desktop version or is there a need to have the web version for that? I can I can feel that one too. Um, so I looked up uh, your account and I didn't see that uh, HTML approver was purchased. So being able to um, letting your users uh, have the ability to approve or see budget or any of those things is really just a function within that particular module. So um, uh, your account manager Kaya Wenz is on this call right now. I chatted her behind the scenes and she will be. Uh, reaching out to you later with more information. But again, HTML approver is the particular widget or module um, that uh, enables email. At least email approvals. All right, we have one more question so far. And just a reminder for those of you, if you do have questions, you can submit them in the chat or the Q&A box. Next question, where there are multiple unposted sessions being built, does the user have the option to select which unposted session to add the item being approved to? Cherry, I'm gonna to defer to you if I can. Yeah, can you repeat that question? I didn't hear the complete. Sure, it says where there are multiple unposted sessions being built, does the user have the option to select which unposted session to add the item being approved to? Well, when we say session, um, we're, when I refer to session, uh, sending over a document to session, that is an accounting function. So a user will not be able to, um, unless we're talking about you know, accounting, AP, and finance, not necessarily of an end user. Um, so let me go back to that. Uh, oops. And Sherry, I mean, something wouldn't be posted unless it was finally approved, correct? Right, it would have to be approved, correct. But I guess uh, related to the session, I want to make sure I was following that question. So when I created a Did session you here, employee, you know, this is referring. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. I'm sorry. She says the accounting employee is who she's referring to. If that helps. Okay, and and just so just so I'm following that question, is it where they can add? Uh, an AP document to the current session, to the additional session? Was that the question? Or create a new one? Add, uh, let's see. I think current. So, yeah. So, yes. if if the, I have this existing session and I'm, I'm approving a, a document, I can put this document in this current session. So, in MIP, I could have two documents sitting in this session or 50 documents sitting in this session, or I can have two sessions going on at once. So I, I, you will have the ability to select which sessions you want to add the documents to. I hope I was able to answer that. Paula, we can yeah, we can we can keep the conversation going um, offline. Uh, like I said, Kaya is your customer account manager, and we can we can go down that rabbit hole uh, and just make sure that we answered everything for sure. And she did say that you did answer it, so thank you. Okay, um, great. 
Excellent. So we have time for a few more questions that I can read off for you. So you said Bring that this integrates. With, you said that this integrates with MIT. What if I need to add a new vendor or create a new distribution code? That's a good question. That's a great question. Um, so. There's a couple options you have if you need to add a new vendor, and it depends on your internal policies, okay? Do you want to give uh, staff access to add a new vendor in MyCoy? Okay, that's the first question. You have the option to turn that on or off. It does not mean that that vendor will get added in MIP, but you do have an option where you can allow them to start the vendor in MyCoy. And then when it goes through the approval process, when it gets up to accounting, accounting will get an alert to have them approve that vendor. And then once they send that document over to MIP, not only is it adding the new vendor, but it's also you know sending the document over to get it approved. Again, you have control over that, okay? Um, so the other option is, it, you know, you could call accounting and say, can you add this new vendor in MIP? If they go ahead and add the vendor in, in MIP, when you come back to this list, you will be able to see that new vendor. Okay. Same goes with the distribution codes. If you add a new distribution code in MIP, when I come back to this list, I'm going to be able to see that distribution code, provided it was not restricted in, in the workflow. So uh, I hope that helps you in um, showing how um, that new vendor and new distribution codes would actually show up here in MyCore in real time. Yeah, no dual entry, no no manual entry, no double entry, none of that. And that's that's really the beauty of, of MyCore is, is just that direct relationship between the two the two systems. All right, the next question is, will this work in the MIT cloud? Uh, good question. Uh, yes. Uh, you, let's see. So first and foremost, the, 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 the modules are there, the users are there. Um, everything is going to work as you'd expect. Uh, I think uh, there's one uh, selling point for, for micro. Uh, here is that even if you're not in the cloud, we still have a way of connecting remote users. So early on in the presentation, we talked about uh, user interfaces and there being really three different ways that a user can interact with the system. Um, one of those is email. One of those is actually having a direct license in the micro, but the other one is that cloud companion uh, or that web license. So even if your MIP system and micro system are not hosted in the MIP cloud, you still have a way of connecting remote users. Those users can be in other states, don't have to be on your network, don't have to remote in. Um, really, really cool functionality. So um, probably more information than was being asked, but the short answer is yes, and the longer answer is yes. <laughs> right, we have two more questions. The first one, Will I still be able to make payments out of MIT? Sorry, can, um, you, uh, yeah. can you kind of show how that might be accomplished? Yes, or at least yes. Yes, you will continue to make payments out of MIP. My core will just route it. We saw the transfer dialog box where we transfer the transaction over to MIP, AP. So, yes, you will continue to make payments in MIP. Thank you. All right, last question. Is there a limit to the number of, the number or type of documents I can attach? MyCore does not limit you on the amount of attachments. It will just depend on your server, uh, the size of the server, but MyCore does not limit you. The other, the so other sorry, thing I related can... to attachments, go ahead, Dan. I was just going to ask, I mean, can I take out my smartphone and take a picture of an invoice or some sort of request form and, and upload that attachment Absolutely. so that I'm not using paper? Yep. Okay. That's correct. All right. So that looks like the end of our questions. So before I wrap up this webinar, I want to give Terry and Dan the option to say any final remarks. 
Uh, uh, I see some names here, um, folks that are already familiar with Microy. I see some unfamiliar names. Please don't hesitate to reach out. We can have a conversation um, about what it is you're looking for. Hopefully today accomplish quite a few things for you. Um, and really, ultimately, I'm hoping that you see, uh, you know, we're all a victim of circumstance here. Uh, COVID has changed a lot of our worlds or uh, changed uh, really everyone's in some, um, some way. You don't need to live in the paper world and you don't need uh, to be a big, huge, sophisticated organization with very deep pockets in order to make your life easier. Um, Likewise, is a very affordable solution. It will allow your accounting um, and accounting related uh, processes to go paperless. Uh, no more file cabinets, no more running into various offices uh, for approval. All right. um, so we want to like thank everyone for joining us today. And if you are interested in learning more about Microy, we do have three additional webinars with Terry and Dan. You can find them by going to our website at jmtconsulting.com and clicking on the events tab. We've got uh, the budget module coming up on April 28th. Timesheets on May 19th, inventory on June 2nd, and we will remind you of all those dates in our follow up as well. Yeah, but I want to thank Cherry and Dan for your time today, and thank you everyone for joining us, and have a wonderful day. Bye. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone.